Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna do a beautiful acrylic painting, kind of a little garden. I think it should be a lot of fun. Now remember, these acrylic paintings are not taking over the oil paintings. It's just kind of show you how I would go about creating an acrylic painting. All right, let's get started. Now, as you can see, I took three seconds and just put in the sketch. Mostly wanted to see where that path is. There's a tree there and some background. Now, right up here, I've tinted the entire canvas with, I think that was a little bit of umber and red, touch of white. Now, I've also got, also got my jar of water standing by and I've got my little mister bottle and I've got all my brushes here laid out so that I can dip them in the water and then put them down so that they don't dry out. If your brushes dry out, you lose your brush. So don't let them dry out. I've also got my little disposable palette because this palette will dry many times throughout our painting today. As your paints can dry as quick as, you know, 15, 20 minutes, especially like the mixes of color out in here. All right, now anyway, enough, enough of all that. Let's just grab a bunch of color and start throwing it up here. I've got my little, my little flat blender brush. Very, very skinny brush though. See, it's not thick at all. So look how skinny that thing is. And that's good. We don't want it to hold a lot of paint. We want it to hold just a bit of paint and to, and to spread that paint around on the canvas. It's not, it's not like blending the thick oil paints where you want a big thick blender brush. It's totally different. So you use different brushes there. Depending on the moisture content of your paints, you can sometimes get these little rippled edges like that. See that? You don't have to worry about that now. You know, you can put them in later too, but eh, just, just a thought, you know? There, just paint this background nice and dark. And this shine, if you're seeing a shine, it'll go away in a couple minutes when that layer of paint dries. It's just because it's extremely wet. And I'm just finishing up adding a little grass back here, just a few brush strokes. I'm doing this while I'm waiting for the top stuff to dry. You see, I tested it, it's still extremely wet. It's only been about two minutes. It's a little more humid here today than it normally is. Hot and humid. There we go. So maybe a little, little more of this shadow out on this side. There we go. All this is subject to change, but at least that gets us something going on in the background. I'm using my little natural hair flat brush. See that? This way it gets you nice and scratchy edges. And then you can go and change to your synthetic brushes in a minute when you want some sharper detail. But try to keep things as fuzzy and blurry as possible when you paint these because acrylics go hard very easily. Just the opposite from oils. Oils go soft very easily and generally you end up trying to make it not look like a muddy mess. In acrylics, it's the exact opposite. It's too hard and sometimes it's very difficult to make it look soft. So think about that as you go. Soft edges, loose brush strokes, and lots of fuzziness to begin with and then bring the sharp detail out from that. Leaving some of your soft edges, of course. And I think you'll have a lot more, well, kind of an oil painting look to it. You can allow some of that to show through, that, that underpainting. I did that yesterday, just to throw down some color. Allow some of that to show through. Now this area up here is still just a little wet. Actually, I think this is probably dry, but that still looks wet to me, very shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drop in a bush or two. See, I got just a nice dark color. And these are maybe flower, rose bushes probably, flower bushes, whatever. It doesn't make a lot of difference, what matters is beautiful negative space in here. Now I'm kind of glopping it on a little bit thicker, but these acrylics will flatten some. They're heavy body, so they won't flatten all the way, which is good for me. I mean, I don't like flatness across everything. I like texture. I'm, I'm used to oil paint. <laughs> there we go. But I'm gonna use that to my advantage, just so I get a little extra variation going on in here. So there, lots of negative space. Good shape to that bush, a little taller right there in the middle. This is a garden, so it can be a little more symmetrical. I, mean, I don't mean symmetrical like, like you're thinking. Um, what do I mean? I mean, it looks a tiny bit manicured. Maybe the gardener isn't totally lazy. You know what I mean. <laughs> there, and over here I just want it to be dark. Nice, and we'll pull a lot of the pretty shapes and things out of this. I'm just for now getting color blocked in so that it can be drying because acrylics don't like to be layered over wet acrylics. Now with a nice light blue color on our, on our little flat synthetic brush, I'm gonna come, let's start right up here. I'm gonna come here and drop in some of our 
little leaf indications. I'm doing this with the blue because I really didn't get any sky up here and I'd like to have some. I was planning to do this and you could do this at any time. You could have done this first, but you would have had to let the whole thing dry before putting the green on top. So I figured it'd probably be faster in the long run to do this afterwards. So that's the reason. That's why we're doing this a little bit out of order. It has to do with the dry times. Yeah, there we go. And then you can just put these little dabs of the negative space kind of showing through. Make sure you get it nice and solid at the top where you want the sky to be showing. There you have it. Not a whole lot, but certainly <laughs> enough to make it nice. You can do another coat on this if this doesn't cover very well. Now I'll fill in this little tree that I just sketched up here. I just like the way it looks. Sometimes when you do garden paintings, not like I've done a lot of them, you know, it gets a little simple. Kind of, you need something to break it up. And I think this tree will do that job for us. It'll break it up just a bit. What's nice about this is that this tree will be dry in about five minutes and you can make any adjustments to the shape that you like. Sometimes, sometimes acrylics have their advantages. And definitely be sure to use them when you find them. Now I've just misted the bottom there. And let's go ahead and just take our, I don't know, a light color. <laughs> At this point, it's just kind of messy. Let's take a messy light color. Actually, a little gray into that would be good. So it has a gray feel. And I started working on some stones a second ago, and I thought, you know, actually, it's a good time to do it. I just threw them in trying to kind of experiment to see if, if maybe they would look good in the painting right now. And I think this is the time to do them. I will not highlight necessarily. Just want to get the indication of these stepping stones or the path kind of built in. Now, we want to have just the tiniest bit of a wiggle to this path. We do not want the path straight, obviously. So let's put that wiggle in there. The rest of this area can be just simply sand or dirt. We'll put that in with highlight. I know this looks light, but these stones are light. This isn't really a highlight, although it is out in the light. We'll put the light highlight stuff out on top. I think it'll look really nice. Give yourself a big one every once in a while. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. A couple of darker shadowy ones, just for the sake of having them. How's that? Of course, a lot of this is all subject to change. I'm just laying kind of the foundation for the, for the little garden path. Good. Now back here, I'm just look at my palette. I'm just a mess. I'm just grabbing a little, a little bit of whatever, a little blue, black, and whatever else sneaks into the mix is just fine. I'll put this right back here to indicate a shadow. There's lots of tall rose bushes here, or flower bushes. It doesn't have to be rose. Whatever people think it is is okay with me. Just put that right in. Nice. Now we're going to go ahead and get out my favorite, well, one of my favorite brushes at least, the little angled filbert. And if you don't remember it, it's got, see, it's got a straight angle and a rounded angle, which is really kind of interesting. Now, let's go ahead and form some of these flower bushes. I'm going to take this brush and just begin to make suggestions using the tip, the pointed edge. And then I'm going to see so you can just use the back end of that brush to soften larger shapes. Again, acrylics. I think I like this brush because of the way acrylics work, because they tend to be hard. This gives you a blender brush, almost kind of like a blender brush in your hand while you're painting with the tip, which I love. See that? This is going to form our little flower bush back here. And each one will be different. You can add so many varieties, but try to keep the colors working together. Don't make them disjointed. Nice. Mm, I like that slightly larger shapes, of course, as you come forward. Good. And then, you know, you change it up. You want to, you want more flowers over here? You can do that. A little extra smudging if you want to. There you go. Up here. Something a little different. Good. And maybe a little yellow. Yellow, yellow. <laughs> right in here. Don't worry about painting over that tree because you can slice that right back in so easy. Don't worry about the little stuff. 
Nice, I like this. I'm just gonna continue working this. Anything that looks harsh, you just touch it and it goes right away. Soften those edges right out. Remember, we're gonna highlight. You don't want this to be hard. You can pull the hard edges out so you have hard edges against soft edges. And there's where you get your beautiful professional look. Let's do some pink ones up here. I think these will end up being pink flowers. Let's get that underpainting a lot more pink. Well, now it's time to break out the little tiny micro filbert. You see how, look at my finger next to that thing. Look how tiny it is. <laughs> Anyways, it is a filbert shape and it works like a tiny, tiny filbert. Well, I guess that's because it is one, right? So let's take a little bit of white and let's start playing around with some of these roses. I guess these are white roses. Now, I went ahead and let most of this dry in here so I can put my hand on it. It only takes a minute or two. And right up here, there we go. Okay, it needs more. So I'm gonna just work on this and kind of adjust it little by little, uh, keep it kinda, kinda loose. You know, you don't want to go crazy because if you go crazy, you might, you might overwhelm this area. So I'm going to keep the edges a little bit on the rough side. You can smudge it with your finger. This is actually starting to look halfway decent. Ooh, there we go. Nice one there. Smudge it in. If the little stuff gets down in there, we can always cover that up. I don't care about that. Now the light's coming across like this. So maybe the, these are the petals that are kind of getting hit with the most sunlight right here. You need that shadow in the middle and then, again, petals that get hit with the most sunlight on the right hand side as well. There we go, just like a mini rose shape. Not everything is perfect, you know, that's there. That's good enough for that one. Do you see what I mean? And some of them hang down in different positions and all sorts of good stuff. There, and you can always put some more shadow in. I should probably not be choking up on the brush as much as I'm like, ah, <laughs> like go back here and just be a little more loose. That would be better. Now I'm taking just one extra minute here and I'm sharpening up a couple of the edges on some of the roses. And this is an advantage of acrylic is that you, your paint dries almost instantly, especially when you do these layers that there's not a lot of water in, there's not a lot of moisture and there's just not much paint there. They dry really fast. And so you can come back almost instantly and do details that would otherwise be kind of challenging. So I'm going to leave a couple of these fuzzy. So let me show you like all those little fuzzy edges in there. I'm going to leave those. And then only once in a while I will pop. Actually, I like that one being fuzzy as well. I'll pop a, a detail out on, on the flower, a, a sharper edge, a crisp line, you know, anything like that. Now we're going to really repeat the same process over and over again on this side. I think my little roses on this side should be, and they don't have to be roses. They could be whatever kind of flower bush you want them to be. Whatever the viewer thinks, if somebody comes up and tells me, well, that looks like a whatever bush. <laughs> I can't think of a, another flowering bush offhand, but you know, I see them all the time. Yeah, I would just say, yep, sounds good to me. <laughs> so do that when you paint. If somebody thinks it's something else and they really like it, you know, like they didn't intend for it to look like that, go with it. No shame in that. <laughs> it's kind of fun, actually. A lot of light on this one, actually. I really like the light. I think the light playing through here will make it feel like it's glowing. Mm. And then back here, let's let's do some more of that actually. Let's do a little of this. Maybe a little softer back here. Remember, you do need a few blurry edges with your sharp edges, of course. Now all of this is dried, so I'm gonna take my little mister bottle, give it a quick mist from far away. You don't want big drops on there. And don't do that unless it's, of course, very dry. All right, here we go. Angled filbert, actually a lot of water in the brush. And I'm gonna just kind of start here at the bottom and pull up a few plants. These aren't necessarily stems. These are just little plants here at the bottom. Okay, that's good. Kind of using that back end to feather it so it's not just straight in like a chisel, like you would use a, like a square brush, a flat brush. Kind of use it 
sideways, kind of in, in between, not this way, not that way. Does it make sense? I don't know if it does or not, but that's what I'm doing. All right, now these could be stems in here. Ah, we're crossing over our pretty roses. Well, we can do that. Just don't do too much. This needs to be connected here. Yes. We need a lot of life in this area here as well. I put some very brown ones in there, so that's kind of a base starting point. And that water on there actually helps it to flow. See, it's getting really good, really good little blending areas. All right, now let me come in here and drop in some leaf action. Some of these will be brighter and some more dull. So I'll do the dull ones first. Then I'll repeat this over there. Now let's highlight with a little yellow ochre and white. It'll be really pretty. Nice sunlit color. And I like that. I'll touch right there. Touch right there. See, you just put it on and blur it. Because again, with the acrylics, as you're probably getting sick of me saying, <laughs> if you don't do that, you could potentially and probably will get a lot of really hard edges. And there's many ways to blend it. the fingers, just what I'm doing right now. There. Now you might be wondering, what am I doing putting highlight back there? Isn't that the, uh, the quiet area? It is, but I'm thinking a few rays of sunlight are sneaking through. That's just my thought. I won't do too many. <laughs> there we go. All right, a little bit more here. You may need to highlight this two to three times depending on how bright you want it to get. There. Obviously, make these stones larger as you come forward. Actually, kind of just copy your shapes that you already got going on here. And then darker, again, obviously, as you come to the foreground, the very closest of the foreground, because things just get quieter as they fade out. That's just art, right? That's, that's good to do. You don't have to do it. It's good to do. There are always exceptions, and maybe there's a reason you don't want to, but then that's fine, you know what I mean? Just out here giving you my ideas. Now one of the last things that we're going to do today is drop on some leaves. Just a few leaves. I don't want a ton. And I think this will really make this area look a little bit more complete. It'll push those background trees way back into the distance and give us just an overall nice look to the painting. Makes it look a little more like a, I don't know, like you're walking into the garden, you know what I mean? Kind of a, I don't know, kind of a welcoming thing. Maybe that's weird. <laughs> Okay, it's probably weird, but hey, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to get us a little bit of, like you're walking under the tree. It makes you feel like you're part of the painting. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.